Yes, children. Hello. Hi. How are you all? Yes, hope all had a good time. Yes. Children, you know our country, India, isn't it? You are living in which state? In which country? Yes, India. So our country, uh, you know, uh, many major physical features are there. India is divided into different physical features. Do you know what are these physical features? Yes, physical features means yes, about uh, like mountains, hills, valleys, plains, plateaus. Uh, these are all the physical features of our country. Hmm? Yes, so let us learn about these physical features today. Okay, children? Yes, so lesson 23, Geography of India. Lesson 23. Geography Geography of India Our country Okay Geography of India hmm? So we are going to learn about the geography of India The features, the physical features of our country So here Ratika and Mihika are talking something Let us see what they are talking Ratika, can you tell the name of the highest mountain peak in India? Do you know the highest mountain peak in India? Radhika, uh, Mihika is asking Radhika. Yes, it is Mount Everest. Yes, Mount Everest is the highest peak in India. The highest mountain in India. Yes. So let us learn about mountains of India, plains of India, plateaus of India, deserts of India and islands of India. So we are going to learn about these physical features about means the geography huh, of our country. Geography means these make our geography. Okay. So first mountains of India. Mountains. Mountains of India. Yes. Mountains are made up of rocks on earth. On earth, these mountains are made up of rocks and are much bigger than hills. Hills are smaller than mountains. Mountains are bigger. Okay, they are made up of rocks. Generally, mountains are higher than 600 meters. See, that much long it is. It's higher than 600 meters. So mountains are higher than 600 meters. Okay. 600 meters. Mountains usually have steep sloping sides and sharp or slightly rounded ridges and peaks. They usually have steep. Steep means what? Yes, steep. Huh? Uh, long uh, sloping sides. Sides are sloping like this. Huh? Slides are sloping. Okay. Yes. Then sharp or slightly rounded ridges. Ridges means the hill top or we say long top, the sharp end. Hmm? Slightly rounded ridges and peaks, the pointed top of the mountain. Peak is the top of the mountain. Ridges means uh, na a long, huh? long rounded ridges we say. In India, the northern part is covered with great Himalayas. If we see the map of India, the northern part, the northern part is the great Himalayas. Okay, you can see here uh, in India, the northern part is the great Himalayas. Great Himalayas are there in the northern part of India. It is the highest mountain range of the world. Highest mountain range means greater Himalaya, highest mountain range of the world. It stretches from northwest to northeast. So in India map, we can see the Himalayas in the northern part. So it is there from northwest to northeast. Uh, if we hang a map of India here, north is the upper part, south is the down part, bottom part, east, west. So north, the Himalaya part covers, or it stretches from where north, northwest to northeast. Isn't it? Northwest means northwest to northeast. This part full of, yes, Himalayas. It remains covered with snow throughout the year. Throughout the year, you know, top of the mountains always covered with snow. 
Many rivers like Ganga and Yamuna flow from these mountain ranges to the plains. Yes, top of the mountains are covered with snow. The snow melts, then water flows. It flows into the rivers and it makes rivers there. So rivers like Ganga and Yamuna flow from mountain ranges. So which rivers are flow from mountain ranges? Rivers like Ganga, Yamuna. These rivers flows from mountain range to the plains. Plains are the land where people live, where we are living, the flat area where people live. Okay, to the, to the plains from northern or for the mountain ranges, these rivers flows from mountain ranges to the plains. These rivers are formed by the melting of snow. Yes, I told snow melts, water flows and it joins to the rivers. Mount Everest is the highest peak in the Himalayan mountain range located in Nepal. Yes, so the highest peak in the Himalayan mountain range. It is Mount Everest. The highest peak in the peak in the world is Mount Everest. Highest mountain range or highest mountain peak in India. It is Mount Everest. It is located in the border of this uh, Nepal, the central and southern part of India contains lower mountain ranges. So the center part of India and the southern part below, down, it, it contains lower mountain ranges, not higher mountain ranges. Higher mountain ranges is in the northern part and in the south and central portion also have mountain ranges but low mountain ranges. These mountains are known as hills. Yes, they are hills. The hills are smaller than mountains. In South India, there are Nilgiri Hills and in Central India, there are Satpura and Vindhya Ranges. South India, below, uh, below the bottom part of India, south part of India, there are Nilgiri Hills. Nilgiri Hills we can see in Tamil Nadu state, okay. And uh, so, the south part we can see Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka, Andhra, these states are there in the southern part of India. So, Nilgiri Hills we can see there in Tamil Nadu and in central India there are Satpura and Vindhya ranges. These are the low mountain ranges like hills they are. Vindhya and Satpura range you can see in the central part of India. You can see Vindhya and Satpura range. Yes, they are uh, so, Nilagiri Hills you can see in the southern part of India and Vindhya and Satpura range you can see in the central part of India. Yes, so that is about mountains of India. Yes, so mountains are made up of rocks and they are very high than hills. Hills are smaller than mountains. So, mountains they actually they are uh, higher than 600 meters. They are higher than 600 meters and they are uh, they are so sloping or steep, isn't it? Yes, and they have sloping sides and uh, slightly rounded ridges and peaks, isn't it? The sharp point they have, uh, sloping sides they have, yes. And in India, northern part is covered with Himalayas, isn't it? Yes, northern part comprises of Himalaya and many rivers like Ganga and Yamuna. It flows from mountain range to the plains. Yes, top of the mountains are filled with snow. Snow melts and water flows and it joins to the sea. So many rivers like including Ganga and Yamuna, they flow from mountain range to the plains. And here Mount Everest, is, it is the highest peak in India. Highest mountain range is Mount Everest. Highest mountain range in India or highest mountain peak. It is Mount Everest and lower, low mountain ranges we can see in the central part of India and also the southern part of India. So southern part we can see Nilgiri Hills and the central part of India we can see Vindhya and Satpura ranges. They are low mountain ranges. You can see here the image of India map, isn't it? Yes, in different colors. Yes, there are various color schemes we use in the map like yellow for desert, brown for hills and mountains, green for forest, etc. And blue for water bodies like seas, rivers, oceans, lakes. It is easy to identify all these features by seeing the map of India. So the color variation they have given, 
brown color you can see brown color shows northern mountains in india this india map the brown colors on the top part isn't it yes northern part of india it is it is northern mountains we say mountains are there in the northern part of india yes so brown colors you, you can see that is mountains the plains of north green color plains of north hmm? plain land of north green color they represent desert thar desert uh, in rajasthan it is thar desert in rajasthan you can see the western side you can see yellow colored one it is desert the indican plateau a triangle shape in the middle pink color it is Deccan Plateau. Coastal plains, again green color it is the coastal plains where the people live near the coastal areas, near the seashore and all. Yes, the last island areas. This all we are going to learn. Okay. These are the major landforms and rivers of India. Now, more than half of the world's fresh water originates in mountains. You know, half of the world's fresh water from mountains, what, uh, the water, water we are getting, fresh and clean water we are getting and half of the world's fresh water, it originates in mountains. Mount Everest is called Sagarmatha in Nepal. In Nepal, they call Mount Everest as Sagarmatha. Sagarmatha. So, Sagarmatha, people of Nepal, uh, they call Mount Everest as Sagarmatha. It is located in Nepal. It is the highest Mount Everest in India. Isn't it? So people of Nepal call it as Sagarmatha. It means goddess of sky. So they believe that Sagarmatha is the goddess of sky. Yes. So that's about mountains of India. Yes. Mountains are made up of rocks. It is higher than 600 meters. They are very high. They are higher than hills. Hills are smaller. Yes, and uh, the mountains are sl having sloping sides, so steep sloping sides, round ridges and peak, the sharp end. And northern part we, in, of India, we can see mountains. Yes, then the top of the mountains are filled with snow. Snow melt, what happens? Water flows and it joins the rivers, it forms the rivers. So many of the rivers like Ganga and Yamuna flows, originates, flows from mountain range to the plains. Yes, from mountains these rivers are flowing. So most of the uh, half of the world, uh, world's fresh water originates from mountains. In the middle part, or central part of India, we can see Vindhya and Satpura range, lower mountain range or hills. And southern part we can see what? Nilagiri Hills. Yes, it is in Tamil Nadu state, Nilagiri Hills. Then uh, Mount Everest is called Sagarmada by Nepal. In Nepal, it is called a Sagarmada, that means goddess of sky. Yes, so in India map, different colors they use to represent uh, mountains, hills, uh, forest, desert, plains, etc. So we learn each one by one. Okay? We learned about mountains of India. Now we will learn about plains of India. Yes, plains. P-L-A-I-N-S. Plains of India. So we already learned rivers like Ganga, Yamuna flows from mountain ranges to the plains. Yes. So plains are the broad, flat area. So plains are broad, flat area flat areas it is actually called plains to the south of the himalayas lie the northern plains of india yes south of himalayas you can see northern plains of india south of himalayas so himalayas are the, the northern part uh, below that you can see the northern plains Yes, in the India map, see the India map here, brown color represents the northern plains, isn't it? Sorry, brown color represents northern mountains and the green color just below that. Northern mountains, they are Himalayas actually, just below the brown color, you can see green colored one. That is northern plains, the plains of the north. The rivers like Ganga and Yamuna flows through these plains. Yes, already we learned, isn't it? 
Yes, rivers Ganga and Yamuna flows from mountain ranges to the plains. So mountain ranges are above this northern plains. From there, from there it flows to the plains. And make the land fertile. Fertile means it improves the quality of the soil, able to support the growth of uh, growth of crops, large number of varieties of healthy plants we can grow uh, if the land is fertile. If land fertile means quality is good, soil quality is good, we can cultivate crops, we can cultivate many plants. These rivers leave behind fine soil known as silt which is good for growing crops. Silt, you know, they are smooth and fine quality of soil actually. They are, uh, they holds water. So, it is a good quality of a soil holding water. We can grow good crops there. So, they are fine quality soil. Silt means fine quality soil. They are, uh, they are smaller than sand. Uh, they are fine quality, soft and smooth soil. It holds water a lot. So, it is good for growing crops. Therefore, many towns, cities and villages have been developed in the plains. So, that is the reason we can see many cities, towns, uh, villages. They have been developed in the plains. In the plains, uh, people started living. Uh, population is more. Why? Because land is fertile. We can grow good crops there. These plains are thickly populated. Yes, these plains are thickly populated. Why? Because, because the land is fertile. We can grow crops. Land is fertile. Because of the fertile land, people are staying here. Hmm? We can grow good crops over here. That is the speciality of fertile land so people th are living uh, people living a lot here thickly populated here many town cities villages have been developed here in the plains you can see the image here plains with growing crops see greenery yes crops are growing the the land is fertile quality of soil is so good uh, there we can find the fine smooth quality of soil called silt which is so good for growing crops so that they are the plains Yes, along the eastern and western coast of India, there are narrow strips of plain land. So, eastern and western coast of India, there you can see some narrow strips of plain land you can see along the eastern and western coast of India. These plains meet at Kanyakumari in Tamil Nadu. So, in the map you can see Kanyakumari, it is in Tamil Nadu state. Uh, yes, so these plains that we already told the western and eastern coast there are narrow strips of plain land they meet were in Kanyagumari that is in Tamil Nadu okay yes these plains are known as coastal plains coastal plains means the land near the seashore where people lives okay the rivers like Narmada, Tapi, Godavari, Mahanadi, Kaveri and Krishna flow through the coastal plains and fall into the sea Yes, so these rivers, Narmada, Tapi, Godavari, Mahanadi, Krishna, Kaveri, these all rivers flows through the coastal plains. They are, finally, they fall into the sea. Yes, so along the eastern and western coast of India, there are narrow strips of land uh, that are coastal plains, we say. They all meet at Kanyagumari in Tamil Nadu and uh, these plains are known as coastal plains. Yes, many rivers are flowing through these plains and they finally fall into the sea. Both the Punjab and Haryana plains are irrigated with water from the river, rivers uh, like Revi, Bees and Sutlej rivers. Both the Punjab and Haryana. Punjab and Haryana were they are the northern part of India. So, these plains are irrigated. How they are getting water? Because of the rivers. Uh, from, from rivers of rivers from water from these rivers which rivers they are Revi, Bees and Satellite from here they are the Punjab and Haryana plains they are people living here getting water from these rivers 
is that's about plains of india so plains they are broad flat area flat area of land it is plains actually so below the northern plain, northern mountains you can see the plains in india map you can see it is uh, right south of the northern himalayas we are just below the himalayas we can see the northern plains mm, here the land is very fertile uh, because of that we can grow good crops here we can find the uh, uh, we can find the fine soil uh, this re reverse leaves behind fine soil it means ganga and yamuna flows from himalaya to these plains so when they are flowing and they are falling into these plains they, when they when they fall into these plains what happens is they leaves they uh, give us a fine soil uh, which makes the land so fertile that fine soil uh, is called silt it is smooth and fine soil uh, it is uh, smaller than sand actually it uh, it is very good for growing crops they are silt so because of this this area these plains are thickly populated many towns cities and villages have been developed here because of the land fertility of the land and because they can grow crops and we we have coastal plains also uh, near the coast of the river coastal plains are there they meet these plains meet at kanyakumari in tamil nadu and many rivers are flowing through this coastal plains and they fall into the sea actually uh, all these rivers from himalayas from uh, many rivers originate from himalayas isn't it is finally they all flow into the sea they will join the sea yes and uh, we learned that punjab and haryana these people are getting water from many rivers like ravi bees and satluj rivers yes next is about table land we say actually it is known as plateaus of india plateaus of india or we say table lands plateaus are known as table lands you know why they are known as table land we say plateaus as table land table you know a uh, four legs are there for the table and the flat area you can see just above the legs isn't it so plateaus are also like that these land are like little, little rays from the flat land plains plains are flat area of land from that level little rays above like a table that's why it is known as a table land yes so plateaus of india plateaus are magnificent formations of land means they are magnificent they are very big uh, land that can be found in many areas across the globe if we look at a globe globe is a model of earth if we look at the globe we can see many there are regions many regions that has plateaus they are also known variously as table lands they are also known as table lands we say table lands or flat topped mountains they are also known as flat topped mountains so table lands or flat topped mountains plateaus are also known as table lands or flat topped mountains the southern plateau of region of india is known as the deccan plateau southern plateau the southern plateau region of india deccan plateau in the india map in the pink color it is deccan plateau it is also known as southern plateau the deccan plateau is surrounded by hill on the three sides yes deccan plateau is surrounded by hills on the three sides the land of plateau is rocky how the land of this region plateau region it is rocky and less fertile than the plains plain land is very fertile but uh, plateau land is not that fertile like plains the region is surrounded by arabian sea in the west bay of bengal in the east and indian ocean in the south this region is surrounded by yes arabian sea in the west bay of bengal in the east and indian ocean in the south and many rivers like godavari krishna kaveri tapi and narmada flows here here also these rivers are flowing through through the plateau region they depend on rains for water so this plateau region always depends on rains uh, if rain is the water is the otherwise no water so they depends on rains for water do you know the landform that reaches out into the sea 
is known as peninsula. So what is peninsula? You know, India is known as a peninsula. Peninsula. India is called as Indian Peninsula. Why? Because it is surrounded by sea on all the three, all the three sides. Like just now we read. Bay of Bengal, Bay of Arabian Sea on the west, in the west, Bay of Bengal in the east, uh, Arabian Sea in the west, Bay of Bengal in the east and Indian Ocean on the south. India is surrounded by sea, this three sea on the three sides, Arabian Sea in the west, Arabian Sea in the west, Indian Ocean in the south and Bay of Bengal in the east. That's why India is called as Indian Peninsula. So the landform that reaches out into the sea. Yes, means peninsula is a la any land mass which is surrounded by water on three sides. And land is on one side. Land is one side, water is surrounded by water on other three sides. That is peninsula actually. Okay, yes. So India is called as Indian Peninsula because it is surrounded by seas on three sides. Like Arabian Sea, Bay of Bengal and Indian Ocean. Arabian Sea in the west, Bay of Bengal in the east, Indian Ocean in the south. Yes. Some part of the Deccan Plateau is also covered with thick forest. So Deccan Plateau, Plateaus, Deccan Plateau it is also known as Southern Plateau. Some part of it is covered with what? Thick forest. Some part of it are covered with thick forest. So it is surrounded by hills on the on uh, three sides, but some part of it is covered with thick forest also. Yes, so that's about plateaus of India. So plateaus of India means they are known as stable lands, we say, or flat topped mountains, we say. They're a little bit above the raised above the plain land. That's why it is called table land or flat topped mountains. So the land here is not that fertile like plain, plain, plain land. Huh? In plains, land is very fertile, soil is very good, but Plato is not like that, not uh, fertile like plain land. Then this re Deccan Plateau or the Southern Plateau of the region. It is known as Deccan Plateau or Southern Plateau. And in India map, you can see the pink color shows the Deccan Plateau or Southern Plateau. It is surrounded by hills on all the three sides. Huh? So it is surrounded by hills. At the same time, it is called the peninsula because it is surrounded by seas on all seas. Okay, Arabian Sea in the west, in the ocean in the south, and Bay of Bengal on the east. So many rivers are flowing through this region, and it depends on rains for water. If rains are the water is there in the region, otherwise no water. That is about plateaus of India. But uh, as Deccan Plateau surrounded by hills on all the three sides, at the same time, some areas are covered with thick forest also. Yes. So that's about plateaus of India, the table lands, or we say flat topped mountains. Flat topped mountains. And Deccan Plateau is example we have seen. Uh, in India map, you can see the pink colored but Deccan Plateau is also known as southern. Plateau. Many rivers are flowing through it. It is surrounded by hills on all the three sides. Some radius are covered with thick forest also. Isn't it? Yes.